I was a bit skeptical about the Silent Hill 2 remake because of two things. One, the game was being made by Bloober Team, a developer that seems to divide its community with polarizing horror games such as Layer of Fear and Observer. I personally never heard of this studio prior to the remake and didn't realize how scared people were, given that while they're known for their art and sound design, clearly shown in their own products, the gameplay was usually never up to snuff. The second reason being the marketing itself, with the character models not being as they should be, like Angela, who was being criticized for being a bit too fat. So much so that a model went out of their way to make her more feminine and better looking. Watching the teaser trailer and looking at the retail version now, Bloober have not only come out on top as being a great developer, but they also made changes over time to better reflect the town of Silent Hill and its characters, and simultaneously shock the world with their presence. Today, I'm going to be talking about what makes Silent Hill a faithful and amazing remake and one of the best games of 2024. If you enjoy the video, like and subscribe and notifications turned on for more gaming content. Let's get into it, shall we? Being a fan of the original, I remember bits and pieces of the story, but only because the last time I played it was when I was a young little boy where I'd wait until night goes down and my parents go to sleep so my brother and I can hop on and get gaming sessions in so I don't get told off. Safe to say that the story is the same, with some new additions, but I don't feel inclined to talk about it in more detail, as I think Silent Hill 2 is a game you need to go out and experience for yourself, as it's heavily open for interpretation, with its dark and gruesome themes. To give a quick summary though, you play as James Sunderland, a man who gets a letter from his deceased wife, Mary, who died of a disease three years prior to the events of the game, and is told that she is waiting at their special place in the town of Silent Hill. What you're in for is pretty much a psychological horror story, meeting characters, enemies, and exploring the town to find Mary, but also go down a path that will only get more complicated and convoluted the further you go into it. There's plenty of shocking and good moments and has a great mix of gameplay to cutscenes, so you won't be getting more than the other. The game is also relatively longer than the original, clocking at around 15 hours to beat on how long to beat. I finished the game at around 12 and a half hours on the game's standard difficulty, so this is subject to change based on what difficulty you play, but it's pretty good runtime, all things considered. Something that I want to give a shout out to are Silent Hill 2's accessibility options, which are amazing and just offer you so much customization from the jump. Accessibility is something that gets overlooked in games because they're usually either the same settings or are just very basic. But in Silent Hill, you can do so much, such as customizing your reticle, what icons you want to show on the screen, colorblind, motion blur, and a high contrast mode that lets you color different elements of the game. Even though this is just a survival horror game, which I feel is one of those games where you don't necessarily need these, it's great to have them anyway and lets you tailor it to your own experience. The most important setting for me was the reticle, which Quite frankly, I don't like dynamic crosshairs and prefer things to be minimal so it shows less on the screen and makes it easier for me to see who I'm shooting at. So I changed it to minimal and made my reticle thin. These settings can also be influenced by the game settings where you can change to either a modern preset for a modern experience or retro to make it feel old school. Silent Hill 2 has interesting difficulty tweaks when it comes to their difficulties. The game divides combat and puzzle solving into two separate categories, each you can change to whatever you prefer, with the options of light, standard, or hard. Combat difficulty is self-explanatory, harder hitting enemies and more HP, but puzzle difficulty actually changes the solutions of all the puzzles, which the game stresses to you that once you set it, it can't be changed mid-game. You've also got a cool new graphics preset which you'll only have a few of at first glance, but you'll get more once you finish the game. Cool way to change how things look if you want to run it back. Silent Hill 2's gameplay consists of combat, exploration, and puzzle solving. Combat is probably the biggest improvement for the remake since the combat in the original wasn't the greatest. Combat consists of melee and ranged, utilizing the two to weaken your enemies and hit them with a one-two punch. It reminded me a lot of the Callisto Protocol where you hit an enemy, dodge, then hit him again. It's simple yet satisfying and the guns act as a way of opening up opportunities, which I pretty much used whenever I had ammo to kill them quick and easy. I love how different enemies have different weaknesses, so you just can't do the same combo over and over again. 
For example, the mannequins are these four-legged creatures that have no head, so your best bet is to shoot them in the leg to get them on their knees, then follow up with a melee attack. Best to always stomp them a few times when they're on the ground just to make sure they stay dead as well. The nurses are another cool one, being able to shoot them either on the head or their legs. Both situations leaving them stunned. I found the legs to be better so that they don't get up immediately and you can continuously stomp them. The guns you get access to are a handgun, shotgun and rifle, each serving their own uses. Ammo is limited and James has a health bar that's shown by this red healing overlay around the screen if you have it on, or if you have it off, the blood on his jacket. This is where exploration comes in, smashing windows, opening drawers and finding key items to help you get through the levels. This goes in tandem with the maps which you'll find as you go through different areas of Silent Hill, and James will note down anything of interest, such as locked doors, safes, and blocked areas, making for easy backtracking since you can get lost, given how tight and claustrophobic these places can be at times. I really loved the map especially, and found myself using it pretty much all the time to make sure I was going the right way. Puzzle solving is the last mechanic to talk about, which thankfully is all retained from the original, with Classics such as the infamous coin cabinet, trickle tree, and rotating cube making a return and new ones jumping in. These puzzles were so much fun to solve that I struggled a few times. You know, the good kind of struggle where you sit there for 30 minutes trying to figure out what to do just for the solution to be right in front of you, or having missed an area you haven't explored yet. This was pretty much me when I was doing the coin cabinet. They never felt too difficult or unfair, and the new puzzles were innovative and interesting adding more to the world of Silent Hill. Quite possibly the biggest change the remake has gotten to the original is the change from a fixed camera to a third person perspective. And this is a change that I welcome so much as sticking to the fixed camera would have been cool, but it would end up instead creating this niche survival horror game that a lot of people wouldn't enjoy. The idea of remakes after all is to garner a new audience and introduce people into the world of whatever it is you're remaking. In this instance, being Silent Hill. It's also great that the game stories are self-contained, so there's no need to play the previous game. It made me feel right at home with Resident Evil, which is my favourite survival horror series, and I couldn't help but imagine myself back on RE7 with some of the later areas, wondering how that game would have played if it was in third person. Blue Team did a fantastic job of maintaining the same feel of the original, and yeah, it just felt natural. One thing that no other survival horror game will ever have is Silent Hill's Fog. Originally intended to hide technical limitations that the game had back on the PlayStation. It also, however, creates this mysterious feeling between reality and the other world, the dimensions that you go back and forth between throughout the game. Luba Team have, once again, achieved another win here, creating Silent Hill in its purest and cleanest form thanks to volumetric lighting and excellent use of shadows, especially in the dark interiors as you enter the hospital or the apartments for instance. From the foggy areas of the daytime to the rainy areas of the nighttime, Silent Hill is both beautiful and ominous in a way that it's hard not to take it all in, even when there are monsters on the prowl, ready to strike at any time. I took the time to just look around for the first few hours, outside of exploring of course, since the game opens up the town pretty early, so you're open to going down the roads and just take everything all in. I also appreciated the subtle references that the game makes to the original, like when Maria picks an outfit from a wardrobe, which happens to be the same outfit she wears in the original game. I had quite a few jump scares playing the game, but not the kind where it's forced. It's the kind of jump scares where it just surprises you out of nowhere when you least expect it, which are the jump scares I love and look for when it comes to these kinds of games. Silent Hill 2 has always been known for its incredible level design, and it shows in the remake with new areas and old ones getting a refurbish if you will, adding more story and depth. Most of its level design will have you in labyrinthian style areas, like the labyrinth itself, the apartments and the hospital mentioned earlier, each with their own set of flaws and complications. Each area didn't feel the same in the slightest, giving you different tasks and things to complete in order to proceed through an area, since doors and objects get locked out, so you'll always have to go looking for something which is something that may not be for everyone. The maps do a great job of telling you where you are and what you have to do, and it never felt like I was being overwhelmed by a group of enemies or necessarily struggling as a result of the game. 
The pacing was also pretty good and I was hardly struggling the entire standard difficulty playthrough outside of one early game death where I had barely any healers and got too greedy. Luba team recruited Akira Yamaoka, famous composer and music producer for the original Silent Hill games and took it upon himself to remake and remix the entire soundtrack, adding new songs and making old ones sound different. The new promise reprise that plays during James and Angela's meetup in the room was my favourite song, with the Heaven's Light OST being my second. It's simply exceptional that this man took his already amazing OST and made it sound even better. I feel like if they hired someone else to work on the music, it would have been heavily criticised and have people going into a frenzy. The sound effects, ambience and combat music throughout the game are all great. Though one thing that shook me every now and then is the occasional woman breathing as James is navigating through Silent Hill. It gave me chills every time I heard that. I've noticed a lot of talk on the PC version about stutters and performance being all over the place. The main topic being traversal stutter, an issue that's currently going on in Unreal Engine 5 where the game will just stutter as you're traveling around. I feel that this is something where you really have to embed your brain to see it as it wasn't too noticeable, at least for me. But something to point out anyway since it's something that can be annoying for some. The only significant change that I made was turning my shadows down to low which massively improved my FPS and used DLSS balancing since native res is a no go for this game, effectively losing out on a huge amount of FPS if you choose to use native. But I only ever had massive performance tips at the apartments and the hospital, dipping below 60 but given the kind of game I'm playing, I personally never found this to be an issue. Usually I give general critiques at the end of a video for stuff I had a problem with, but I didn't have a single issue with Silent Hill 2 at all. I have nothing bad to say, nor anything to critique, and I'd go out of my way to say that it's a perfect remake. Blooper Team not only defied all odds and came up with a great game, they also kept it faithful to the original, pleased the old fans, and welcomed new ones, with its incredible additions, improvements, and amazing story. Not to mention, they even added brand new endings on top of the 6 available, available only on New Game Plus. I'm open to checking more of Bloober's games out after this and am glad it's being well received by everybody. Silent Hill 2 is still one of the best survival horror games of all time and you should go out of your way to buy it. Thanks for watching. If I missed anything, comment down below. I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.